I can already tell that it's just, there's like zero resistance on it. The only resistance that you're gonna get with this T-Rex application is the spring that's on the slide in your carburetor. Everything else is just, it's butter. Um, you just have to get over the fact that you're going to be gluing grips. But sticky throttles are, uh, that's not good, pretty unsafe. And uh, re causes a ridiculous amount of, of uh, pain on the wrists. Hello, my name is Ray Sutton. This is an installation video for the T-Rex Billet Throttle. This bike is a 2022 KTM 125, but this installation video will apply to KTM Gas Gas and Husqvarna 125s for the last few years. They're all, they're all the same bike. Um, first thing you want to do is remove the seat and then the gas tank. I'm going to leave the shrouds on the gas tank. It's just easier. Um, so let's get to that. I have one bolt on this side. Other bikes will have bolts on either side. Um, and pretty much most of this is going to be an 8mm. On the gas tank, you're going to have a, a center bolt that's 8mm. that out, set this aside. Um, I'm just going to take the, uh, the gas tank vent off of the frame like that. And now you're going to have, let me move this. Now you're going to have two eight millimeters on each side of each shroud. And I just like to drop the bolts straight down so I know where they're going. I'll put it back together. So, once again, two bolts on each side. I like to use this T handle so you don't strip stuff out. On the pet cap coming off of the gas tank, Squeeze this little clamp, bring it down, and I, you obviously want this petcock closed. I like to remove the petcock side instead of the uh, carburetor side. Oh, it's a little stiffer than I thought. You got a flathead. You can remove either side of this hose, it doesn't matter. You're going to get a little residual fuel. Let me capture that. If there's any. Okay, this one doesn't have any. Just ran it out. Okay, now the fuel tank can come off the bike. Kind of pulling these shrouds out a little bit. And then kind of lift up on the tank. And it's off. And uh, I'm just going to set this over here. All right, next we'll do an unboxing of what you're going to get. In addition to what you're going to get, you're also going to need some, uh, some grips that are not lock on, but are glue on and some type of glue. I like, I like the ODI. Um, so in the T-Rex billet throttle box, you're gonna get the throttle. You're also gonna get a cable that's going to apply, be for your application depending on what bike you have. Okay, next you're gonna take the stock throttle and cable off the bike and pay attention to the way it was routed so you can run the new cable the same way. Um, once again, another eight millimeter T, T handle. Just loosen this guy up a little bit. Two bolts right here. Just loosen a little bit and it's gonna slide right off and kind of hang. Um, once again, pay attention to the way this cable is routed so it doesn't get bound up in the future with your uh, new cable. 
Okay, um, and the re reason I removed the fuel tank is so you can access the slide on the top of this McCuney uh, carburetor easily. So you're gonna need a seven millimeter to get the, uh, the two bolts to get the slide out of the top of the carburetor. I'm just going to set these bolts straight down. Um, you want to be doing this when the top of that carburetor or your bike is clean. as to not do drop uh, debris down into your carburetor and into the jets and all that other fun stuff. Okay, so here we go. So let me take this to the bench. Okay, the next step is to to separate this cable and top of the carburetor assembly from this slide. So the easiest way to do this without knowing what you're doing or, is to bring this spring out with this plastic guide or retainer, if you will. Get some small needle nose, get it in between there, and then open up the needle nose a little bit, bring it back, and then you can fish the bottom of that cable out of the slide. And you can kind of bring this out and set it right there. But if you noticed in the slide area where the cable fits into a notch. So that cable is going to fit into a notch. And then the plastic retainer that's inside the spring is so that cable doesn't come out of that notch. Um, so on the new cable, it, obviously one end is going to look just like this. And the other end, this is going to go to your twist throttle. So the next thing we'll do is remove the cable from the top of the carburetor. Um, this is going to take a 10 millimeter. Um, you just have this one. And you're going to unscrew it by hand. So now this old cable and twist throttle can be set to the side. Now you're going to put the new cable through and the thread that goes in the top of this carburetor cap doesn't need any lock tiring like that you can just snug it down not too tight let me just give it a little snug not too tight okay we're going to put this new cable so i'm going to move this side through Make sure that spring stays on there. Okay, we're gonna get this. So now, I can kind of fish this in there. So I'm getting that, there's a crimped in on this cable that's gonna go inside that slot and then you pull away so it stays in there. Kind of keep the cable a little tight and then bring the cable in from the other side out to make up the gap. So, see that? I'm pulling the cable on the other side. So now you've got no slack on this side, if you will. Um, and I'm gonna just do this little test. Pull this cable and pull on your slide to make sure it's definitely in. Okay, now, now I can set this down to the carburetor. That's our next step. So a moment ago, I took a little blue rag to wipe down any debris on the top side of this carburetor that would drop down into the carburetor, plug up a jet. Um, it wasn't dirty, but just got to re-verify. And I also took a blue rag to the O-ring on the top side of the slide cover. That O-ring up there. Um, and it's clean. Um, there is, there isn't, you can't put this thing in wrong. The slide's only going to go in one way and the top cap's only going to go 
on one way, but you're going to fish it through here instead of straight down or route it this way anyways. And I'm, with my right hand, I'm holding the cable to keep this spring tight. Right now I'm trying to get it to drop. There we go. You want that slide to drop all the way through um, or it will not go on. And once again, this cap is only going to go on one way. And once this cap is on, and held down to the top of the carburetor. You don't need to heat, pull the uh, cable anymore. Let's start these bolts by hand. Want to get them down as far as possible by hand so you don't pinch an O-ring. It's on the top side of this carburetor. Okay, now I'm going to tighten it, tighten the two bolts anyways. I probably don't need this swivel. Looks like I can go right through the frame. I'm just snugging it up. These would be really easy to strip out. Okay, now I want to re-verify that this nut on top is tight, but not really torqued, if you will. It's tight. This cable is going, so you're gonna, before, you, next you're gonna kind of slide this black rubber boot down. That seems fine. And then route it through here, just like the old one was. It's going on inside this little piece. And this one too. Okay, and this is just going to fit right up here. All right, and let's get our th twist throttle ready. Okay, now we're ready to put the twist throttle on the bike. Um, first, we'll open up this window. Set the window aside. I'll drop the, uh, yeah, let me drop the bearing out. Now the bearing does have an orientation. These uh, silver windows are on top. Remember that. Set that aside. Now I'm gonna route the cable through. And it's gonna go Just inside. Well, this will probably be easier if I. Actually, attack. Start screwing it into the twist throttle. Be less wiggly. And I can loosen up this backup nut out a little bit to get some more threads in there. Okay. So we're going to get this in here. You're going to go from the inside, notch that in there, and the cable is going to lay just like that, just like any other twist throttle. I'm going to remove that rubber boot to get some more spacing. Now I'm going to get my bearing in there, but the bearing has a guide so for the cable. I'm going to wedge that right there. See what I did? I went in from an angle and kind of pull it to make sure it's in this bearing groove. And now I'm going to start 
unscrewing the cable from this throttle, this twist throttle to make the cable tight. So there's no more wiggle room and the cable can't come loose. Okay, and I'm gonna leave the window off. Slide the twist throttle onto the bike. Oh, I believe these are tight. Okay, this looks like a four millimeter. Loosen up these two bolts. Okay, that was nice and loose. Now the twist throttle will slide right on too. And there's an O-ring inside here to keep uh, anytime you're water or uh, pressure washing the bike or debris and stuff. It keeps um, all debris and uh, moisture out of your twist tube, which is pretty neat. And it's a pretty tight O-ring. So you're gonna have to maneuver it on there. And for me, I like to go all the way and then just back up. Well, for these, you can go on all the way and the twist throttle is still really free. Um, but I'm old, so I still like to back up a little bit. So I'm gonna put it about right there. And like anything, there'll be adjustments in the future depending on the rider. Tighten up these uh, four millimeter bolts on the bottom. You know, just nice and snug. No need to over torque this. And for me, I like basically no play in the throttle. That's just me. Okay, just looking around, inspecting, making sure everything seems square and nice. All right, next I'm gonna adjust the, the, uh, the cable. So for me, I don't like any slop. See, there's a little slop in that cable. So I'm gonna adjust that out a little bit. Just maybe a little bit of slop. And during the first couple of rides, you're going to want to readjust this or you might not like a little bit of play or you might not. So you would adjust that through here. So this is done. Now I'm going to put the window on and secure this retaining nut and slide this boot on. Okay, now I have the window back on and this nut tied down tight a little bit. I'm going to slide this boot up. And that is done. Now you're just going to want to put grip glue on your grip and then slide a, uh, a grip on there and then install everything that you took off, which is just the, uh, the, the gas tank and the uh, seat. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, now we're ready to put the, the grips on. Um, you're going to get two grips when you buy new grips. Uh, the one with the, the bigger diameter hole is going to go on the throttle side and this other side. This other grip is going to go on the other side. Um, so I've already put glue on the, on the twist throttle and what I like to do, and I probably put too much, is just put, I don't know, three or four or five lines of it and then some on the end. Um, and let it sit for, I don't know, a minute and then slide this on. These are not super easy to go on, but actually this is a... This seems pretty easy so far. You just want to kind of get it square, if you will. Get that end on all the way. And then you don't want to stretch the grip, if you will, because it's going to 
mess up the glue in the future and kind of come back to its normal length. Um, I like to twist it around a little bit so your lines are straight, so your grip is not all goofed up. Okay. I'm not sure why I chose a red grip, but whatever. They don't last long anyways. Okay, now you want to let that dry. And uh, on this bike, I'm not even going to change the left side. Uh, my son goes through grips every 10, 15 hours. This bike only has 15.5 15 hour, 15 hours on it from new. And the OEM uh, cable and twist throttle was already starting to get sticky. Which, uh, it's, uh, that's not good. And this one, I can already tell that it's just, there's like zero resistance on it. The only resistance that you're going to get with this T-Rex application is the spring that's on the slide in your carburetor. Everything else is just, it's butter. Um, you just have to get over the fact that you're going to be gluing grips. But sticky throttles are, uh. It's not good, pretty unsafe, and uh, causes a ridiculous amount of, of uh, pain on the wrists. So that's it. Thank you.